everybody and welcome to book chat i am your host author vivian e moore and i thank you for joining in listening to the show today um and if you happen to miss it live you can listen to it again uh on um on any of the um of the URLs that I am about to give to you. But before I do that, um, I just want to tell you um, about um, what I did today. Um, I was invited to come and speak uh, for a Black History event uh, at uh, St. Paul AME Church. And uh, I just want to thank those uh, ladies and gentlemen who made us feel right at home. Uh, I thank them very much for inviting me to come out and, uh, and share this occasion with them and to um, talk about uh, what I do as a writer. Um, and there was another a young lady there also that uh, that spoke about um, her writing as well. And it was just a very good, um, just a very good uh, program today. Um, and uh, of course, I always have to uh, thank my home church for coming out and, and uh, supporting me in everything that I do, because I truly appreciate them. I love them so very much uh, because they have been there with me uh, from the start. And uh, and so I just want to thank them so very much for doing that. But the show was so great. And, um, you know, we talked about a lot of things. I keep saying show the program was so great, but, um, you know, it's just, it's just good to be able to, um, to, to, uh, talk about, uh, this thing that I love so much and that's writing and, uh, and, and, and given the opportunity to, um, to express how much I love, uh, what I do. Um, and I, and I hope that I continue to go, to do good things with this gift um, because I know that it was, it was given to me for that purpose. So I want to make sure that, um, you know, that I'm always giving God all the glory for everything that he's given to me, uh, for, because without him, I, I would be nothing. I would have nothing because everything belongs to him. But, um, anyway, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, I hope that everybody's having a good Saturday, a good weekend. I know it's mushy outside. It's raining again, <laughs> But, um, you know, God knows what we stand in the need of. So we just have to thank him for the rain, you know, as much as we thank him for the sunshine. But um, I don't know how your day is going. I hope it's been good. I hope that you got a lot of things accomplished today Um, because I know Saturday is usually a busy day for just about everybody that I know. And, um, you know, we couldn't really take advantage of, of being outside much today because it is sort of uh, misty and, 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 and just rainy and wet out there. But, um, you know, I hope you made the best of it. So anyway, um, without further ado, we're going to move on, uh, to these URLs. So grab yourself something to write with and something to write on and we'll get, we'll get started so we can move on to today's show. All right. So of course the first URL is to my Spreaker, uh, account, and that is who the show is broadcast through and you can uh, pick up the show either live or or uh, recorded at https colon forward slash forward slash www.spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash author Vivian anymore. You can also follow me like me on Facebook and that is at https colon forward slash forward slash www.facebook.com forward slash author Vivian e. Moore. Um, you can also follow me on uh, Twitter. My handle is God's Property 46. Um, and you can also follow me on Instagram. I upload all the information about the weekly shows uh, on Instagram. And that is https colon forward slash forward slash Instagram.com forward slash God's Property 51. And you can also check out my lovely website. Uh, I plan on uh, updating it with some of the things that I did today. Uh, that is https colon forward slash forward slash Vivian Moore dot Wixite dot com forward slash author Vivian Moore. And you can also check out all of the, all of the, the <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied. You can check out all of the discussions that we have on Saturday uh, on my blog site. They're all out there, and today's uh, will also be out there. And that is vivianemore.blogsite.com. Uh, you can also check the uh, the recorded show out on on uh, iTunes, and you can also pick it up on iHeartRadio. All right. So now that we've gotten all that stuff out of the way, let's move on to today's show. The title of today's show is called "All of Me," and the topic is the heart and soul of a writer. You know, I'm, I'm not here today to tell you how to become a writer. 
if the burning desire exists within you, then you already know the secret. What I want to do is start out with three important things that is necessary to anyone who has hopes and dreams, no matter what they are. The first one is uplift. All those who came before us, we stand upon their shoulders and those who will come after us will do the same. The next word is encourage. No man is an island. We must first encourage ourselves before we can do the same for others. And lastly, empower. We all possess unique qualities and abilities that come from God that give us the authority to do, give us the authority to do anything. These three powerful words is what everyone should remember and repeat them often like a mantra to yourselves and to others. Throughout my career, I have been fortunate um, to be in the company of people who are not stingy with these inspiring words. Maybe all of them didn't speak them out right, but their support and generosity suggested that this is what they were trying to imply. Those that know me well <laughs> know how passionate I am about writing. Also, my level of dedication to the craft. I take what I do very seriously. Therefore, I put forth a serious effort at being the very best. I never planned to be a writer. Not once did I ever say as a child, I wanted to be a writer. Instead, I wanted to teach. This simply proves the authority God has placed over our lives. And so my path was already chosen and just waiting for me to accept my gift. Nevertheless, I am so thankful for the gift. Unrealized at an early age, but later I knew that I possessed an ability to write and, and I embraced it wholeheartedly. You know, I told my first story when I was in kindergarten and I may have mentioned this before, but it was called The Red-Eyed Girl and it was just an impromptu tale, uh, but I realized then that I was on to something. I had the ability to capture the attention of others just by telling them a story. The feeling was amazing, especially for an introverted individual like myself. I was so shy and would rather fade into the background than be noticed. I wasn't the person who ever raised their hand in class, whether I knew the answer or not. I was too afraid to speak. I remember um, when I first came to my church, and maybe it was the first year of me being there, I'm not sure. But uh, there was uh, this this lovely lady, this lovely young lady by the name of Sister Yule. And she's gone on to be with the Lord now. But she was just the sweetest thing. And uh, she used to do the church announcements. And um, so she wanted to, you know, step down from that position. And she wanted someone else to move into it. So she nominated me. <laughs> and and I was like, no, 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 that's what I wanted to say because I knew me, you know, I knew that this is not what I do. I can't stand before people and speak, you know, intelligently without making a look a, a complete idiot of myself, you know. But uh but I didn't say no. I said yes that I would do it and I have been doing it, you know, all these many many years I've been doing it and and I mean, you know, I'm still nervous about it when it comes to standing uh, in front of people. But, uh, you know, you have to learn how to just turn things over to God and he will give you the strength uh, that you need to get through any situation. And, you know, and not only that, it, it was a confidence builder uh, that conditioned me to stand before crowds and to, to, you know, to talk on the radio, to do all of these things that I never thought possible. But, you know, that's just the thing about God. Everything that we think is impossible, God turns it into possibilities. But, you know, through writing, I found my voice, many voices. And what I know about writing is that even if you have the gift, the creativity and wherewithal to compose and articulate dialogue, you still need one more important factor. If I know anything about writing, it is that you must read Otherwise, it is impossible to compose any thoughts or ideas without first reading. If you don't read, you can't write. It's that simple. You have to form your own style. And this is done by reading other authors' material. 
Even if it is your gift, you must acquire knowledge to make it possible. Little did I know that the countless hours spent with my head buried inside a book or visits to the public library on Saturdays and summer vacation, um, when most kids were outside playing games and having fun, uh, I had no idea that sacrificing all of that time would lead to more than just a quest for knowledge, but a remarkable journey. And I have to thank my mother uh, for first realizing the importance of teaching me how to read at the age of three years old, no less. Uh, books by Dr. Seuss. And, you know, for the stories that she told us as kids that triggered my imagination, um, that also helped to develop my knack for storytelling. It was her pearls of wisdom sprinkled here and there throughout my life that prepared me for the challenges ahead. And not just in life, but also what has become a career of creative writing. Every artist possesses a level of creativity, but first you must see it before you can create it. And it's okay to use your imagination. We were all born with them. It is an important component that make up the necessary elements for storytelling. There is something fundamentally uplifting about self-expression and the ability to tell a great story through the eyes of characters. With anything in life, you must always approach it realistically and in the proper perspective. Failure is an option, but not one you should relegate yourself to simply because the possibility exists. You don't have to be afraid of failing. Trials will come to test your faith, and that's okay. If we never know what we're capable of, then we will never reach our full potential. What motivates me to keep striving for excellence and moving forward, despite all the things I needed to overcome, um, it comes from a supernatural source that I'm linked to. Nothing motivates me to action more than hearing the word no or you can't. First of all, I have nothing to prove to anyone else except myself. And I've never felt the need to exact revenge from naysayers um, to say, see what I did? To do so would be taken away from my source of power that comes from Christ Jesus, who strengthens and assures me that I can do all things through him. I have experienced failure and rejection in ways that would make a lesser person pack it up and say, I'm done. But I didn't because I had examples of those who came before me. Do you know how many famous authors there are? who reach success through failure? Well, the answer is plenty. Now, I mentioned Dr. Seuss and his first book, and to think I saw it on Mulberry Street, that book was rejected 27 times. And Stephen King, we all know who Stephen King is, one of the, the best uh, science fiction novels of all time. But anyway, his first book, Carrie, that book was rejected 30 times. Now, these are only a few examples, but they persevered and were determined because of the three powerful words I told you about at the beginning. I also refer back to those words often, especially when I need reassurance. Self-doubt is like the Terminator. It will destroy everything within its path. Along with it, your confidence. And I had to conquer all my fears and start believing in myself. I think the hardest part of being a writer is not writer's block, but accepting criticism of one's work. No one likes it, but it is a huge part of developing strengths. And this may sound negative, but it's really something positive. You need to be open to constructive criticism because it's a strength builder that helps to reveal your weakest areas. It's great for growth, like tree pruning. But I need you to know that I never had any dreams of fame and fortune. My goal was to write a book and publish it. Well, God blessed me to do that multiple times and allowed me to cross racial and cultural boundaries in a way I never thought possible. He answered one prayer and opened the door to so much more. The journey has been a long one over 20 something years. God willing with many more to come. Honestly, writing and selling books is an extremely competitive business. If you want to be successful, then you have to not only be persistent, but hone your craft. 
Whatever you write about should be relatable to your readers. Allow them to see themselves in the characters you create. This is another important feature as a writer, and I'll tell you why. If you don't form a connection to your audience, then you've not only lost a valuable reader, but also a fan. In closing, I want to leave you with this bit of knowledge that my mother shared with me long ago. And basically what she said was, if you are going to do anything in life, do it well and do it right. When you believe in your abilities, then there is nothing that you can't do, whatever it is. But you have to put forth your best efforts. No matter what your dreams are, if you first believe in yourself, then you are already halfway there. Keep reading, keep writing. All right, folks. That's all I have for you today, and I hope that you gained something from, um, you know, from this um, this little commentary today. I hope in some way that it uplifted you, that it inspired you uh, for all of those potential writers, for those who are just now bursting on the scene uh, of writing, of creative writing. I hope that these weekly shows in some way uh, help you to develop your skill, help to encourage you to keep moving, to keep going. Um, to know that, you know, in, despite uh, adversity, that you still can be whatever it is that you hope to be. But you have to keep moving. You have to keep um, persevering. Because if you ever give up, if you ever stop believing in yourself, then that's just it. It's over. But um, I, ju- I just wanted to um, just give you some thought, you know, to to tell you that, um, you know, that you're already better than what you realize And, um, you know, that, that is my goal this year is to uplift and to encourage, um, others because that's important because I had that, you know, and, and all the time you won't receive it from your family, you know, but you can receive it around, you know, receive it from those people, um, who you are around that, you know, that, that give off positive energy in one form or another. And because we all need it, you know, we all need that to keep moving, no matter what it is, just in life in general, you know, we need that, we need that positive influence, that positive flow around us that, um, that supports us and just, uh, and, and keeps us just, you know, anchored. We all need that. And also tomorrow is Sunday. And you know, I always say this, that uh, I hope you take a family member that doesn't go to church, uh, often take a neighbor, take a friend, tell someone about the, about God, because they need to know, um, especially with all the things that are going on today, um, in this world. I mean, it's just so heartbreaking and, you know, just to, just to see all the things to hear about it, um, almost daily, you know, every time you turn on the news, you don't expect to hear anything positive. You know, it's always something negative, something devastating, but you know, there's a way to remedy that. And that's through Christ Jesus. Um, you know, our savior and uh, those words of encouragement that only he can give like no one else can. And so that's why I always urge you to take someone to church with you. Um, so they can hear about the, they can learn about the Lord and hear the word. Um, you know, because it's just a good thing. And also, Tell somebody that you love them because tomorrow is not promised. Today may be the only day we get to tell them that. And I just want to tell you that I love you. I hope you love me back. Until the next time you hear my voice, God bless you and goodbye.